Hey there, my name is Promise. Welcome to more Kingdoms Reborn. It's been a fair while since the last time I played this game, and there have been some updates, including the addition of a new faction type. We have the Shogunate. These guys are actually pretty decent. They do come with a 10% bonus to their luxury production, which is probably still not as good as the Emirates for trade, but at least it is something. Yeah, you can actually see it right here. There's a 10%, plus some unique resources like rice, plums, sushi, ramen, sake, green tea, bonsai, and electronic gadgets, presumably for the end game. Fun. Could always change our appearance to be a little bit more appropriate. I mean, I, I feel like this is even better. We'll do that. I'm gonna reduce the number of AIs because to be honest, they haven't really improved those much in the game yet, so they're still not exactly a threat or really involved in the game much at all. So I don't feel like we need very many of those. We'll have a large map, low sea level. And then we have to talk a little bit about the difficulty because I've talked about this before. So a long time back, 320% consumption was considered to be the highest difficulty in the game. It was called Deity. Then, in the Norseman update, they upped the difficulty a little bit. Deity became like 400% consumption, and they kind of bumped everything up accordingly. And I said, hey, that seems a little unnecessary because it's already very difficult at 300%, let alone 400 And then they upped the difficulty again. I, I don't really know what the devs are trying to do here. Deity's insane. 500% consumption. It can be done. I know it can be done. I've seen it done. However, it's not fun. You will spend hours, 30-something years in the game, just trying to gain a stable footing with like 50 people. You're not going to go anywhere anytime fast or do anything of real interest. So I'm not going to do that, all right? I know people want to see the highest difficulty. I just don't think it's an enjoyable way to play the game. I could bump down to Immortal. I still think that that's really difficult, but let's give that one a go so you guys see a challenge. The Great Freeze left civilization in ruin, blah, blah, blah. You've seen this all before. New art, though. That looks kind of nice. And now we have to hunt for a new location. Now, a large map is obviously truly massive, so we have plenty of environments to pick from. Notice, by the way, they did bring back the icons for the different luxuries in different uh, zones instead of everything being kind of open-ended. The community didn't really like that in the Northman update, and I kind of agree with that one. So they brought it back. Thank you for listening. Now we just have to find a good starting location. I feel like a location over here wouldn't be too bad. There are going to be some tulips not too far away that we could grab. The grapes will be an option later on. Some additional kind of open-ended seeds. And it's close enough to some mountains we would be able to get some stone in a forest province, which is usually the better way to go if you're going to be starting a high-difficulty game. Ooh, actually, maybe something like this would be even better. Still close to, like, a little river. Still close to some mountains if we expand to the east, plus some extra resources, a lot more seeds down here. Still close to some stuff I'll be able to take advantage of. Yeah, this, this seems good. Lots of rich farming nearby is going to make my life a lot easier. Let's go ahead and pick this one up. I'm going to start with some extra food, medicine, and tools. Reduce the others just a little bit. Leave me with some initial money. All right, that'll have to do. Let's go ahead and give this a go. So we do, of course, have some unique artwork for the uh, different town halls and different buildings as the Shogunate, which I do think is a fun touch. Try placing down, let's say, right there. I think that's okay. And of course, we have to choose our starting card. So we want to start off with the investment. This is usually my go-to pick. Though we do have the Rice Breeder, a way of growing some rice. Interesting. I don't know how much better rice is from other grains, but it might be good. Plus, we do have a lot of rich, fertile areas not far away. If we can get some gold and buy those tiles, maybe this is our way out. I guess I'll take it for fun, but I think that the investment is technically the better way to go. All right, simple opening moves. We are going to chop down all non-fruit trees in the region. We are also going to gather up all stone in the region because I need everything. I would like to get two fruit gatherers, but I guess I'll take one plus a hunting lodge. Forester, I'm going to want, but not yet. We're not at that point of the game yet. Go ahead and plan out a couple of roads in these directions just so I can get my bearings. And we can also build out a couple of houses, of course, leaving a little bit of space in between them for some eventual shrubberies, because that does tend to bring up some happiness. I want to think a little bit more about the long term than I usually do in these games. And let's plan on some fruit gatherers, let's say, in these areas, and of course, place the hunting lodge nearby. I will probably have to move a lot of these buildings later on, but again, we just need to get our feet underneath us. That's the most important thing right now. All right, let's go ahead and unpause. Choose some biome bonuses. Better productivity of farms in forest biomes specifically. So these fertile soil zones are not considered to be a farm, so the boost would not affect us there. That said, I am surrounded by forests, so odds are pretty good I will clear out large areas 
to do that. As much as I like the charcoal, we tried this before, and it sounded fun, but it really did not pay off. And at the high difficulties, you need that extra food. So let's go ahead and pick up the farm biome. And I'm actually going to spend the money to go ahead and upgrade the town hall so we can get ourselves another thing right now, just so I can kind of see what we can work with. Productivity for beer, vodka, wine, tequila, mead, and sake, or boost up tool production. I, I, I kind of want this for early game survival, but this obviously will be better in the long term. All right, we're going to take this. I, I probably did not need to upgrade the town hall, but I couldn't remember exactly what the second bonus was going to be in the forest, so we just kind of went with it. It's fine, though. We've got ourselves a couple of decent-ish bonuses. So the rice breeder allows for rice farming in its radius. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, if I can get myself a fair bit of gold and grab this, I'll definitely place down some rice, and we'll see what happens. So obviously our first priority in this game is getting food. If we do not get food, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. Because we are consuming at 320% rate. Still not as bad as the 500%. Yeah, I acknowledge this, but it is still certainly going to be very, very painful. Our people are going to start dying off. Uh, we could always enact cannibalism, but I really like to avoid that if possible. We also need to get things like basic medicine up and running as quickly as we can. Because if we do not get some medicine, my people get sick, and that's just one more way for people to start dying off. And that's no good. Starting to generate that little bit of science, though. That's going to be nice. One thing that you have to do if you're going to be playing on the high difficulty is, honestly, as much as it would be nice to keep getting a lot of new techs, Sometimes you need to spend your time going for the upgrades instead, you know? Sit around, just try to hit a new equilibrium where you can sustain a certain amount of population and the rest die off every year, and then kind of build up some of those 5, 10, 15% efficiencies until you can sustain a bit more, and that's kind of why at the very top difficulty with Deity, it takes for freaking ever, because all you're doing is slowly building up efficiency until you can try to hit some sort of a critical mass. And honestly, it's really hard to hit that critical mass. It is rough. We'll use some boosts, trying to get extra food from our hunting and our gathering, not expecting a lot out of that. We do not need another hunting lodge. A pig ranch would not be a bad plan. We will want stone tools, but maybe not this exact second. Uh, anything else here? Don't have enough money for a fishing lodge. I will take the other fruit gatherer. That needs to be a high priority. Let's get another one of those up and running. Oh, and they did add in that copy button. I don't really understand why they did this, because you can spend money to just go ahead and copy as if you had the card. Right, like, I, it kind of just negates the entire point of a card system and the randomness involved. I get that at some point you had enough money, you could just kind of keep redrawing, and, like, what was the point anyway? So, either they need to rethink the card mechanic and just kind of make it, like, everything is wild cards, which I think actually is a setting in the game. That, that That's something you could do, but, I don't know, it just feels like if I can just copy whatever I want whenever I want, then all I need to do is have one copy of any uh, building within the town, and we're set. Second pig ranch. I will pick that up as well. That is literally all of my cash. Good thing I didn't bother with the investment card, huh? Because we would have gotten nothing. Okay, so pig ranches are, of course, still a very good way of getting some early game food. Um, I'm debating how much I want to place these around here right now. Because this is not exactly space efficient. That said, I really, really, really need to get these going because the food is going to be huge. So, all right, let's go ahead and place down a pig ranch over there, and we'll place down another one over here, I guess. Odds are pretty good. At some point, I'm going to get rid of these, and we will rework things once I have granaries unlocked. But for the moment, oh well, this is going to have to do. Let's go ahead and gather up food as fast as possible. Now, one major problem with going for the fruit gathering strategy is, uh, while it is one of the more efficient forms of food gathering, it only works, you know, during the growing season. Once winter hits, you're kind of in a lot of trouble. By the way, let's go ahead and boost up some stuff there. Boom, boom, boom. I'll take the smoking chamber as well, even though I don't really want to spend my stone. We'll get these upgraded as much as we can. But when winter hits, we're not generating any food, and as you may have noticed, we are already still consuming all of the food we are producing, even when we can gather it. So come winter, that's when everyone's going to start dying off. That's where the cannibalism card can come in and save you. No one likes that you have to do it, and again, you, you don't really have to, but when one person dies, it can sustain two or three other folks. It is helpful to kind of hit that exponential growth curve. Wandering traders have arrived. Yeah, those guys are good. We can sell off leather every time I get it. I'm going to start running out of things like medicine and stone tools very quickly, so uh, we need to start thinking about where I'm going to do my next farm. Which, I guess, I don't really have access to until we finish basic medicine, but pretty sure around the river will be some decent fertility. We might take advantage of that. Obviously, this is the place to go. And we do have enough money that I could claim this right now. You know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and claim this sucker. We will do that. 
and then I will want to place down some of these rice breeders and stuff, but this whole area is so fertile, I'm hopeful we'll be able to use this and carry ourselves to victory. By the way, over in these houses, I actually am going to try turning off any fuel. I know that sounds absolutely cruel, right? People are going to be extremely cold, but I expect them to die anyway. I especially would like the children to die, which sounds horrible, I know! However, children are going to be eating all my food, and I need my adults to keep working jobs right now. If the adults die, but the children live, I'm going to lose. So, either way. But we're going to try to do that because I need to sustain as much fuel as possible so I can continue doing some construction projects like, I don't know, the rice. We really need the rice. Okay, we can place down some farms. Your goal is to try to get a multiple of 64 or as close to that as you can because that's traditionally the most efficient way you could do things. So, 128 would be good, 192 or just 256. So let's go ahead and place down some farms over here. We can start growing some rice that away, and I would like to also be able to start growing some of those herbs I had been talking about. I guess we could just do more farms up in this direction. A lot of this is going to have to get changed, all right? I'm not keeping almost any of this in the long term. We'll get rid of all these things, shuffle them back around once I have my footing, but this will be okay for the moment. Okay, we were able to survive that surprisingly well. If this had in deity difficulty, I think about half my population would have died. But we were able to get through this with actually a net positive, amazingly. Okay, that's fine. Okay, somebody left my town because they were starving. This is usually the beginning of all the problems. I'm surprised we even made it as long as we did, if I'm completely honest with you. Guys, please keep gathering up all this food. Every little bit you can keep keeps more working adults. The more working adults we have, the better. Come on. Okay, we finished with foreign trade. That's great. Uh, sake brewing, rice wine. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, actually. Use the rice, create a luxury. Hmm. Um, sheep ranch is probably going to be the better way to go because I would like to get some food and stuff like that. Um, the sheep ranch will probably end up being the better way to go because I do want to get wool and stuff at some point, but I'm just debating anything else. We're not really going to have enough wood to go around to feel like furniture is a good idea. And pottery is too manpower intensive, so probably not a good call. Let's go for the sheep ranch to start. I think that's fine. Do I want a trading post? Yes, but not a port. Okay, the farms are up and are running very shortly, and come on, finish them up, finish them up, finish them up. Got it. Okay, so high priority needs to be having people actually work here. Oh, they're cute little rice patties. Okay, so now we're going to start farming up some medicine stuff. It's midsummer, which is a terrible time to begin all this harvesting. In fact, I'm not even sure if anyone's going to do much. No, they are planting. Okay. We will not get much of a harvest, and honestly, this is nowhere near enough medicinal herbs, but it's what I got at the moment. Let's go ahead and place down that trading post. Again, this is all going to get moved later on. For now, I just need to have it somewhere, so I can do some emergency trades if I need to. Wandering traders, once again, let's go ahead and sell off all of the leather. You cannot buy anything from these guys before anyone asks me a question like that. You can only sell, which is why I'm getting rid of the leather, because I have no immediate use for this. That's just a small influx of gold. Fuel reserves are low. Yeah, that's because no one's allowed to burn any wood. Where the smoke's coming from on these houses, nobody even knows. How are the pigs doing? We are... At 7 out of 15 here, 12 out of 15 here. I'm surprised this one is doing so dang well. The pigs are more prolific in this area. Get up to 15, though. We'll start slaughtering. Then we finally see our investment start to pay off. Okay, the trading post is now done, which means we could buy and sell some stuff. It does come with a pretty hefty fee, though, so it's not like it's going to get me a lot of value. Not to mention, we can't even do much. My quantities here are absolutely atrocious. Still, um, we'll just go ahead and sell off even more leather to get some more cash so I can figure out what I want to do next. We could go ahead and start gathering up some territory here. I could pick up this one. There's apparently a huge cache of stone in this area. That might be useful. Honestly, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning toward we could pick up the extra farming province, but we haven't even filled this one out yet. So probably not on that. Let's just go ahead and expand somewhere like over here. So we have access to a lot more trees, some more stone and stuff, and just more growth room. What's that song by Schoolhouse Rock, you know? Elbow room, elbow room, gotta get a little bit of elbow room. Something like that, I don't know. It was supposed to be talking about, you know, the U.S.'s manifest destiny, but with a catchy song, so you don't know that it came with some problems. I am going to make sure we always have at least two laborers in the town, by the way. If I don't have people capable of carrying goods around, it doesn't matter if everyone's fully employed. Nothing's going to get where it needs to go in order to keep people alive, you know what I mean? People are dying left and right. Would you like to eat them? All right, I'm going to say no out of principle on this, but if you really want to ramp up faster, cannibalism is sort of the way to go. I know, it sounds awful. Yeah, minus 12 population. Mm -hmm. 
This is what you would hit within the first year if you were on Deity difficulty. Okay, we finished some more science, which means now I can go to the upgrades. That's important. Hey, look, the rice patty. So I could have gotten the investment card, and I still would have picked this up really early on. That's fine. Let's go ahead and start working on things like farming technologies. We're probably going to be sitting on this for a while, trying to get every little bit that I can. A sheep ranch, honestly, would be good later, but I don't have the population for this to make any sense. So let's just save the money. How's our food production and consumption? It says we're surprisingly close right now. You can see the lines are almost perfectly matching each other, though. That's because while we would actually consume even more food than this, the second it appears, we basically immediately consume it. That's, that's why these lines match up perfectly. So um, don't be deceived. This does not mean that we have enough food. It means our consumption will rise to match up everything we produce at a moment's notice. Okay, here comes the rice. Oh yes, oh sweet baby, we're getting some freaking rice. Hundreds of rice, yes. It's probably not enough to survive the winter, but it means that no one else is starving at the moment. Then they're just gonna freeze to death instead. I do need to buy some stone tools. I hate to do this, but I think we need it, because if we do not have more tools, we're gonna be in trouble. Because I'm not producing any of my own yet, so let's go ahead and spend a little bit of money to do that, just to keep ourselves afloat. We need to think about how we're going to fix this. More hunting lodges, foresters, and so on. Not important right now. Um, none of this is going to be very helpful right now. None of this is going to be helpful right now. And there's a stone tool workshop. Could get the immigration office. And if you have the one person to spare to start getting more people into the town, this can be helpful. It's really not that bad. It's just one worker who's not, you know, producing much. Uh, it's especially funny, by the way, if you have the cannibalism card, because what you're doing is really just like like having a tourism ministry to say, hey, come to this town so that you can then eat them. It's, it's pretty funny. I'll pick it up. Hopefully we can find a way to make it work. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get some tools up and running so I can start producing. And we'll get the immigration office, though admittedly this is a lower priority. I'm still not going to let anybody burn any wood. I know you're all freezing to death. I get it. It's awful. But... I need this wood, okay? You can't have it. I mean, if you click on the individual people, we can see their heat meter right here. This guy's down to 38, then 37, and so on. If it ever goes down to zero, they die. But if we can get into early spring and it starts to warm up, maybe we're okay. So, I mean, it's one of the things, one of the reasons I kind of chose being a little bit closer to the equator in this game, because it should be just kind of a naturally warmer climate. So, hopefully, this means that we never really need to worry about fuel. It's kind of like a deceptive, like, honeypot trap as far as where you're spending your resources. Let people be cold. It's fine, as long as they don't get down to zero. I do need somebody manning the immigration office. If we're gonna do this, let's commit, let's have someone go over here, and we need this to go a little bit faster. Um, sure, first impressions are important. Let's invest in that and try to make this as fast as possible. More people, more jobs. More jobs, more food. More food, more people. And yes, it looks like we did manage to get through that winter with no one dying from the cold. So this is a good thing. We did not waste any of our lumber on fuel. It's also one reason I didn't bother with the charcoal upgrades, because they were pointless. Whoa, the immigration office brought in five immigrants. I thought it only was going to bring in one. Wait, when do they change that? That might have been a thing for a while, actually. Now it's kind of ringing a bell. Maybe that is always a thing. Well, whatever. Okay, good. More people is good. We like more people. I actually low-key kind of wish I had gone cannibalism, just because it is extremely funny to me, the idea that we'd be bringing people in just so that we can eat them. You know? It's like, just get your meal to go, right? DoorDash? Hi, here's your fresh person. Okay, we're gonna start producing some of these tools. I'm gonna take off one of these motivation books. It's a 12% boost over here, just so we can get a few more tools out of these resources. This is one of the things that can mess you up, honestly, is using up a lot of your stone and your wood just getting tools together. But, like, you need them. You need tools. It's important. Now, of course, the more people we do have in the town, the more food we are consuming. So don't get complacent. We need to continue placing down additional food. I would also benefit from having, like, a forester or something. Something where we can start placing down some additional trees, fruit trees in particular, to make these even more effective, but also just in general to chop stuff down, because unless I'm willing to start buying more tiles, we're going to be a little bit low on lumber. Speaking of buying tiles, let's just go ahead and buy that one and say, hey, if you've got nothing better to do, chop down all non-fruit producing trees. They are unproductive and must be purged. Boost up the farming technologies again to level 2. Of course, this gets more and more expensive as time goes on, but... Every little bit of extra productivity is helpful, and we've got a lot of people working these fields now, so we're going to get an even bigger harvest of rice. Notice the consumption's catching up again. 
So again, this is where I'm saying, do not get complacent. Complacency is death. More immigrants. I will take a passion book. Sure. And we will toss that on over, let's say, here so we can get even more food production or something. We are going to need some more f uh, housing pretty soon, actually, which is a great place uh, to be in because um, I wasn't sure we would survive this long, to be honest. But we're about to get a whole bunch of new immigrants. So more immigrants. Again, more jobs. Go, go, go. It would be nice to get a tavern up and running just to make people happy. If people were happier, I feel like that would be good for, well, one thing, like my motivation and such books, those are important, but just generally making them more productive. You want to have nice and high work speed. Um, that might be a thing we want to do. There we go. Now we're starting to catch back up on that. Okay, good, 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 good. Food, how we doing? Okay, again, not as good as I would have liked, but still a pretty decent bumper crop to work with, and we should have enough herbs at least for the moment. So now the question becomes, how do we expand our industry in other ways? Okay, um, we're not going to be able to move on to the next level of the farming tech. Could go for things like the charcoal and cabbage, etc. Don't think I need that. Let's instead go ahead and move to something like sake brewing. If you can start getting myself some very basic luxuries and make some people happy. Upgraded houses would obviously be very nice for extra science and gold income. And we actually almost have enough people to work all the jobs that are currently open. 27 open jobs, 25 people are currently filling them. That's good. Very good. I'm a little concerned with how quickly we're starting to go through our food again, though. Consumption is still a little bit high. I've got more farms, but still not looking like it's going to be enough. But even if I'm going to have people die, if I can at least sustain this level of population, this feels okay. One problem, of course, being that we have a whole load of useless children still. Ugh. Let's see, a sake brewery. Wow, it's pretty big, actually. All right, we need to keep that away from all of our people. How about we set one up over uh, this direction by the pigs? Uh, I'm sure that's going to be fine. Something else they added into the game actually not that long ago, and I misplaced the road here, so let's redo that. Something they added into the game very recently, which is one of the reasons this got back on my uh, watch list, is they added in something called Advanced Buildings. I don't know exactly how they work. They are basically just bigger versions of buildings you're already familiar with. And ideally, they have even better production, supposedly. Uh, eventually, we'll get to that. It's going to be a while, though. All right. Yeah, we're still breaking even on food. I'll go ahead and place down a couple more farms so we can keep on top of that. The sake brewery is done. Okay. We can spend stone to make this better. No need to get to Sake Town yet. We'll go ahead and boost up the productivity and sure, consume less input means our rice goes further. I like the idea behind that. So now we can start producing stuff. Also, the Sake Brewery can start making Yuzu Sake or Umeshu from plums and oranges. Ooh, interesting. And for some reason, no one is willing to build my tavern. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Once in a while, the game does seem to get stuck on things. I don't really know why that would be the case. There we go. Now we have three people working on that. Just want to get that happiness up a little bit. Dang it. Get that entertainment going. Looks well, so like we have managed to get a house up to level two. There we go. Okay. So it does produce a little bit more of the income in science. Just a bit. Which is the entire point of the sake brewery. is basically just to invest in getting me more science and stuff. And there's my tavern. Okay, so we can spend a very small amount of money in order to boost up happiness a little bit for a lot of these nearby houses. I'm not willing to spend a lot, honestly. It's not like our income's phenomenal yet. Of course, we do need to be worried about the fact that we are going to be consuming rice a little bit faster now. So, yeah. If I can get a sustainability book or something over here, that would be great. Reduce the amount of rice necessary in order to make some basic luxuries. Boost up the productivity, etc., etc. All of that would be great. Year five. Overall, the population did decrease mostly from old age, though. We consider that to be acceptable. And I'm still running low on stone. Let's go ahead and buy this really large forest province that has a bunch of crates in it. Which gets me a prize. Yes, I'll take that sustainability book we were just talking about. And I guess it did not come with a bunch of stone in it. Okay, that's fine. It does have the mountain attached, though, which has 23,000 stone in it. So now we could start mining if we want to. More housing upgrading. Houses actually look pretty good. I do appreciate that the devs have been adding in some new art styles for all the different civilizations that they release. That is pretty cool. Again, though, I think the priority needs to shift away from adding in new civilizations at this point and just focusing on game balance and improving the dang AI. They can do that. This game's honestly in a pretty good spot as is. Still not keeping up with the tools. All right, we're going to go ahead and use that copy building. It's going to cost me 120 gold to get another one. And place it right up over here, I guess. That is fine. Plus, let's just go ahead and place some storage nearby, because why not? All right, there we go. 
So with two of those, if we have enough people to go around, which we seem to, we have excess laborers right now. We can go ahead and get on top of that. That means we'll be fine on our stone tools as long as I can find a source of stone. That's going to be the next big hurdle. Food, we are rapidly running out of. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, guys. I keep telling you. It just gets worse and worse. But here comes our next harvest season. It's still looking kind of okay. We seem to be sustaining ourselves with the level two housing. I'm gonna go ahead and get more housing because we actually are getting close to needing more growth. And once again, come late autumn, it's looking a little on the cold side. Yeesh. But the only reason we even have any lumber at all is because I've left the fuel off, even during the winter. If we could find a way to get around that, that'd be great, but I would need to invest very heavily in the charcoal industry, and that is manpower and resource intensive, so I'm not sure it's worth it. We may just have to accept some people will die. Some of you will die, but that is a sacrifice I am willing to make. Okay, still holding steady here. No one died last year. It's amazing. And we're actually ready for Middle Age research. Let's go ahead and start working on that immediately. And I've bought some territory up over here because I am anticipating we are going to run out of space to continue with this extremely decent rice paddy growth, and we're going to need more fertility. This whole region's great. Yeah, honestly, I think this is the first time I've tried a high difficulty where I was surrounded by tons and tons of fertility. The farming strategy does seem to be working better than a lot of other ones. I feel like the fruit gathering used to be the only real option. Now, it's still, like, pretty good, all in all. Like, it, it can produce a fair bit per season, but... It's just not as good as the farms. 143 food for one person working here is significantly better than anything these fruit trees uh, are going to be able to produce for us. So we found a really good strategy here. If you have a ton of fertility, I think I actually could have made this work on DD difficulty. However, I'd have to be waiting until about year like 14 or so just to get to the point I'm at now. So my hope is from here we're going to be able to start continuing to build on this, keep the food going, grow, get some more luxuries. I would love to be able to start growing a load of tulips and stuff, but we need extra manpower available for that to work. But I think this is a good place for us to end this first video. We found our footing. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will oh, see you guys next time.